Good afternoon. I'm Josh Kerlack alongside my co-host Nick Price here with the Jayhawk Sports Report. Thanks for tuning in tonight. We have a lot to cover, so let's get right to it. Kansas Jayhawks opened their football season on Saturday night against Southeast Missouri. Year three here for Charlie Weiss and KU is fired up coming out of the tunnel, running onto the field after a week delay. Early on, KU looked good, up 10 to nothing as Montel Cozart finds Nick Harwell for a six yard touchdown pass. Montel Cozart going back to the air as he finds Tony Pearson evading a few tacklers and outrunning the entire SEMO defense. Jayhawks up 31 to seven. Here come the Red Hawks of Southeast Missouri as Chris Snyder is found in the back of the end zone. Officials originally said no catch, but they would overturn the call. Red Hawks down just 34 to 28. The ensuing kickoff is an onside kick. Kansas falls on it. They would run out the clock for a six point victory, 34 28. And Kansas improves to 1 0 on the young season. Our own Game one for the Jayhawks against Southeast Missouri State is in the books. And although they came away with a victory, it wasn't as easy as expected. In the second half, the Red Hawks outscored the Jayhawks 28 to 10. Head coach Charlie Weiss says lack of success was what slowed down Kansas. I think that you know they might not be used. They might not used to success. You know to be playing on top. You know, too many times the games are close, and all of a sudden it's 20 for nothing. And I don't think you ever stop playing hard. Before the season even began, Kansas's top two running backs suffered season-ending injuries. Transfer DeAndre Mann stepped into place and rushed for 121 yards. Uh, I, I believe in my offensive linemen. I believe in, in the coaching. And, yeah, I, I believe in this. So I, I, I think I can do it all the time. Kansas had an explosive first quarter with a 24-0 lead. Wide receiver Nick Harwell caught two touchdowns in his first game as a Jayhawk. Despite his success, there are a few things he would like to work on. Blocking, just, uh, just making those plays that I didn't make tonight. And as far as the team, we should just continue to grind and work hard and play a full game, a complete game. Next weekend, the Jayhawks will hit the road to take on Duke. Reporting from Memorial Stadium, Stephanie Bickle, Jayhawk Sports Report. The Big 12 named cornerback Dexter McDonald Conference Defensive Player of the Week. He is the first Jack to receive Big 12 Weekly Honor since last November when James Sims was named Offensive Big 12 Player of the Week. McDonald was all over the field for the Jayhawks defense on Saturday. He had two interceptions, that one going for 67 yards. McDonald also broke up two tackles, or broke up two passes and had two tackles in the game. Switching our focus to golf, the Lady Jayhawks took the course for round one of the Maryland Smith Sunflower Invita Invitational held at Alvamar. Jumping right into the action here is Junior Yupa Porn, Kawin Pacorn, say that one ten times fast, on the second hole with a great chip shot to put the ball within three feet of the hole. She would knock that down for birdie and finish at two over for the round. Now on to number five where senior Michelle Woods takes this putt from 40 feet out and sticks it within four feet of the hole. She'd tap that one in for par and would end the round tied 14th at three over par. Now let's take a look at the individual standings after the first round of play. KU sophomore Pornvipa Sakti leading the pack shooting a two under 70, followed by Malin centered Alejandra Acosta and Connie Jeffrey all tied for second at one under 71. Stina Renson and Marcy Arrington both shot even par today, putting them in a tie for fifth place and rounding out the top seven, KU senior Gabby DeMarco shot a one over 73. After the first round of play, the Jayhawks hold the top spot at a combined score of eight over par. Kansas State coming in second, four strokes behind the Jayhawks, sitting at 12 over par. Central Arkansas and Oral Roberts are tied for third at 15 over par, and the Lady Jayhawks B team currently sits in ninth place at 34 over par. Still to come on the Jayhawks Sports Report, the women's team, the women's soccer team, looking to stay undefeated on the road. Plus, the women's volleyball team looking to sweep the Denver Invitational over the weekend. We'll be right back. Where you go to college makes a statement about you. This place will become a part of you, your identity for life.
the University of Kansas. A great place to be you. And welcome back. The Kansas women's soccer team hit the road for the first time this season. The Jayhawks maintained their perfect record with two more wins at Colorado and at Denver. On Friday, Kansas knocked out former Big 12 rival Colorado by a score of 2-1. Liana Salazar broke a 1-1 tie in the closing minutes for her sixth goal of the season. Freshman Lewis Huchan also added a goal for Kansas. On Sunday, the Jayhawks continued the streak with a 2-0 win over Denver. Morgan Williams kicked in her first career goal to put them ahead 1-0. Then in the 43rd minute, the Pioneers kicked the ball into their own net, giving the Jayhawks another goal and a 2-0 lead. Kansas would hold on for the victory, and the Jayhawks improved to 6-0 for the first time since 2004. Kansas returns home to take on Cal State Northridge on Friday night at the Jayhawks Soccer Complex. Game time for that one is scheduled for 5 p.m. The Kansas volleyball team spent its weekend in Colorado participating in the Denver Invitational. After rolling through wins against Bradley and Sam Houston State, they faced undefeated Denver for the championship match. The Jayhawks prevailed three sets to one, improving their overall record to 5-1 and one on the season. Kansas senior Chelsea Albers was named tournament MVP, and freshman Anise Havili was selected to the all-tournament team for the second consecutive weekend. The Jayhawks are going to be back in action on Tuesday night for a home game against UMKC. So, Josh, exciting weekend for KU sports. Yeah, exactly. The KU football team got a win, and, and we saw some of the uh, women's soccer team, and, and the women's volleyball team also came out victorious. So, a good winning weekend. Hopefully, they can all improve on their past performances. Right. A lot to look forward next week, and we'll be covering all of that for you. Well, Jayhawk fans, that is all we have time for in tonight's broadcast. A special thanks go out to our entire Jayhawk Sports Report team. For Josh Korlak, I'm Nick Price. Have a good evening, Lawrence.